Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to ThinkTech Hawaii's uh, Human Humane Architecture here broadcasting live from our tropical paradise in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, this show is dedicated to look how the um, built environment could be uh, substantially uh, sexy as uh, the uh, natural environment is. And uh, sometimes we get a little blindsided because we're here, so what do we know? Sometimes we can't see it anymore. So the best way to do it is get peer review, and the best way, the very best way is to get external peer review. So today we have the excellent chance to have someone here uh, to help us out with that, and that's architect Will Bruder. Thank you very much for this great experience. Thank you for being here, much appreciated. Yeah. And we want to dive right in because um, you're a very well-known colleague, uh, an architect. Um, I call you the father <laughs> of the Desert uh, Arizona School of Architecture, and we can get a little bit more in detail after that. Right. But great as you are, you said, I don't want to talk about my desert stuff because I want to experience this place. And from my experience from a similar, not that unsimilar climate and, yeah. and culture, maybe give you some ideas or some hints, so we're looking forward to that. Great. And so um, this, is, this picture shows how we met um, actually a, a while ago uh, in the desert, where we found out that we knew about each other right. uh, from these projects here, which, which are both uh, civic and civil projects. And uh, that's how we got to know each other and, and ever since are in touch and uh, now you're here. So yes. great. And, and so we're going to basically walk through the next pictures. And if uh, the studio can just basically walk and we basically talk uh, while we walk. And this is a, a documentation of yesterday's day together. Right. We picked you up and uh, we means if we can get the next picture already, uh, Don Hibbert, um, our friend, uh, we're spending the day together. And you said, just show us stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Show us both the goodies and maybe the stuff that doesn't work so well. Show it all, and I will basically take it in yeah. and then let it out yeah. today. Yeah. And later on, we're also going to promote uh, your other main event today is a lecture at the School of Architecture here at UH Manoa, and that's going to be 6 o'clock, so uh -huh. you guys please all right. attend. Yep. So let's start walking. Well. Beautiful. Well, this is what I woke up with out of my hotel room over on the uh, south end of the beach. And uh, the sounds, the surf, the blowing palm trees, and the skyline of this great city. And it was my first time here, so this was really mm -hmm. a treat. So mm -hmm. we're going to be wandering the streets. We mm -hmm. uh, went wide and far about 10 hours yesterday. So Yeah, uh, and, and you hit the spot with bit. that beautiful big picture. Yeah. Um, which is basically how that fabric looked not that long ago. This yeah. was all palm groves yeah, for yeah. Waikiki. Yeah, and, no, so. it's a, and the palms are an amazing tree. I mean, they're flexible, they're structural, they just bend, they're mm -hmm. sensual. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just really a great background for the the rigor of the geometries of yeah, a, a yeah. great city. And there's a lot of disagreement going on within the community, but uh, many of them say they're exotic, so yeah. they're not native to the islands. <laughs> they basically came, right. but they're not invasive because no other plant wants to grow in the sand where they do, so they complement. Yeah. And this sort of terminology of exotic and invasive has been very helpful for me to yeah. apply to everything, well, including people and architecture. Small world, because we're having the same battle in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. People, palms, where they come from, where mm -hmm. they came from a bunch of camels mm -hmm. that ended up in a canyon that was named Palm Canyon in mm -hmm. western Arizona. Mm -hmm. And they're great shade trees. We have the date palms, of course, and they add a certain stature, but people oh, they give enough shade. I mean, what's mm -hmm. this about? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They've been the marker of oases, yeah. whether exotic like yours or arid like ours, mm -hmm. forever. Exactly. So, small. so then uh, keep on walking here. So we started on this walk. So we were scheduled to meet Martin about uh, 10 o'clock, I think it was, for the official. My mm -hmm. wife and I were on the streets already being on Arizona time at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and immediately these banyan trees and this architecture going down to the beach towards Waikiki, and it's, oh my God, we've never seen anything like it. And there's so many clues in our mind for what the face of a building could be like, how you would shade it, mm -hmm. how you would sculpture it, mm -hmm. how you would fabricate it, and especially with all the new technologies we know about now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. next please. Great. Uh, next uh, image, please. 
And again, what grabs your, your eye? I'm not a surfer by any means, but the architecture of the surfboard was the first thing I really came close to and touched as we walked down the beach towards the city. Mm -hmm. And these forms and the weather and the wear and the gaps between them and the soft forms. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about all the things about the wind I'm feeling and yeah. the motion of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. And this is the ultimate mm -hmm. high-tech logical solution for yeah. how you build and occupy the ocean. Yeah. So and as, really you, cool. as you prefer to call the show from the past to the future, as in with any object, there's evolution going on. Yeah, exactly. They had the wood boards yep. way back, yeah, and yeah. these are the foam boards. Yeah, right, and yeah. so technology is always evolving, yeah. and so is the form and yeah. performance with yeah, it. Yeah. And our, our hint is architecture yeah. should do likewise. Yeah, yeah. Right. And my sketchbook is my iPhone. Mm -hmm. I've take, I've, I've carry, I pack around any one time. Right now I've got 40,000 images from yeah. the last four or five years. Yeah, yeah. So I hit the, the road running and it's a sketchbook to record my memories. No, and, and I have to say I had the great privilege to spend a great morning getting <laughs> all your great stuff <laughs> and basically shoveling it. And so all these pictures are courtesy and copyright of Will Bruder, <laughs> except the ones where you see Will in and I took these. Yeah, right, right. So yeah. you'll see how great of a, huh. a sort of um, a, a capture you are of, of moments. There are beyond, I want to make clear, because when you know when I had produced it, I thought like one could take this wrong and say this is just pretty picture, but you're talking not surface, you're talking substance and the trying relationship to, to trying surface. To, yeah, because as the day evolved, mm -hmm. it was a really interesting journey to what I thought and then what, oh, I didn't get that right, and uh, then you keep moving around. All right, it, so, it's all so let's keep going. Okay. Yeah. So I'm looking at the beach, I'm seeing people, I'm seeing color, I'm feeling the air. It's like, wow. This is paradise. Mm -hmm. And then I look up and I start seeing some architecture. This is a little circle hotel down on the, on the main drag. Mm -hmm. And it's dated. It's what they call mid-century modern, I guess. But it's an honest, proud little building that's got a flair about it, almost like the, so the plants I was seeing, the flowers blooming and all these mm -hmm. things. So there was an architectural connection back then. Exactly. And then we have something more, I don't want to say boring, but the, the, the veranda's yeah. given away as being a place yeah, yeah. where you could use decks. But uh, you know, you're, you're juxtaposing what what is this street fabric, mm -hmm. and it's a rather abstract analogy to 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 flora, right? Yeah. Versus yeah. Oh, today, totally. where it's yeah. literal, too literal, and yes. they throw like palm leaf pattern on uh, buildings, which you will see yeah. too on yeah. Ephes, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. is a different thing. Yeah, right? this is 3D. This is yeah. full in out. Every one of those balconies is working for mm -hmm. shade, for mm -hmm. occupation. Mm -hmm. As I've seen the, the, that building now for two days because I walked by it three times already this morning in my walk, mm -hmm. and it's ever changing. It because is because again the the rich depth of the facade. Yeah, absolutely. So keep on walking. Where do we go next? Oh. Well, from our hotel room, we saw the, a pink apparition on the horizon to the north. Mm -hmm. And we thought that looked like it probably has a good place for breakfast. And so we walk along the beach, and that's a historic photo up in the upper left right left corner that I uh, took from the hotel's collection. Mm -hmm. And that's what the beach was all about. And mm -hmm. that's got to be something where I come back to, because now the beach competes with a highway. Mm -hmm. It's noisy, it's mm -hmm. distracting, mm -hmm. it's not about people, mm -hmm. but we're gonna come back to that. It's not paradise. But this anymore. was, this is mm -hmm. that beach a few years ago, and yeah. wow, is that something else. Yeah. But then you're coming up to this hotel, and suddenly you've got inside, outside, it's seamless, it's just the flow, the light, the protection against the heat, the rustle of the air, you're outside because everything's open, mm -hmm. and yet you're in this wonderful mm -hmm. building from, mm -hmm. I think, about the 1920s, and mm -hmm. it's interesting because in Tucson, Arizona, where Martin and I got to know each other quite well. There's a place called the Arizona Inn, mm -hmm. and it's a variation on that same pink, which was really interesting. Which was on my way to work on my daily bicycle right, the way right, to work, yeah. and I took the pictures of when Frank Lark Wright, who yeah. is, when you're right. the father, there's grandfather and great grandfather. Right, right, yeah, yeah, he's our great so, granddad. So exactly. That's all good. Mm -hmm. But again, the blending of landscape and yeah. color and, and place, and also how a certainly imported style yeah. uh, works in yeah. a similar climate, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. it's not it's not invasive. It's no. exotic as well. Right. The exotic and the, the magic of these older buildings very often as well as the quality of new ones is proportion and scale as old as time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's buildings that really understand a body, mm -hmm. a context, mm -hmm. where windows form, how they form, where the sun comes up, mm -hmm. all these things. But in proportion and scale, these are the timeless buildings mm -hmm. of community, uh, not the ones that just flash through with style. Exactly, yeah. Next, please. So it was Sunday, so where would we go appropriate for Sunday? Somebody said the church, cathedral's probably open. I think mm -hmm. you might enjoy it. So this, again, is a marker of this mid-century period, but a soaring cathedral right down on the beach. 
And it was really interesting because the rigor of those structures, I could be looking down that palm grove. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about what I saw at the window of the hotel, and here mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. in this, this chapel. Mm -hmm. That's my wife Louise with me there, giving scale to the operation. Mm -hmm. And then I found these wonderful little oculi that Martin and I, we, we speculated, might have been operable before mm -hmm. air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they've been replaced with these wonderful little dashes of, 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 of color. That's yeah. like these little yeah, rainbow yeah. circles of, of color that mark down the, the aisles on both sides yeah. of the church. So it was a fun thing to be part yeah. of, and again, scale and proportion. And, and, and Don, our conscious of the islands, being with us, uh, this having been built in 62, he confirmed that actually not these round ones, but the stainless steel windows are pivoting, so they were able to get the cross breeze. Of course. And now it's Amazing. unfortunately AC, yeah. so but yeah. bring it back yeah. to what That's it another was. thing to talk about with technology, because if there's ever been a place mm -hmm. where air conditioning should be a minor player in, the, in mm -hmm. the pattern, not a major player. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had the air conditioning on once in our room, once everywhere you can go, and mm -hmm. occasionally we've been mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. bubble, right? And so. all these buildings you've been choosing so far are doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you haven't shown any contemporary building yet. That's, cu That's I'm curious the, about I'm that. I'm very too. curious about that, too, uh -huh. because I'm. Well, let's keep going. All right. We, we've got um, a few minutes left here. All so. right. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I had great guides, and this is over on the campus. And these are, again, marks of the past with references to deep past. It's ironic. We have the lava stone walls battered in their form, mm -hmm. uh, like some ancient civilization. And this is the Heritage Center at the university campus. And these pyramidal forms making uh, reference to thatched roofs. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, that open image that we showed of this sort of mesa-looking form is my mm -hmm. Phoenix Central Library, mm -hmm. clad in copper, exactly. Arizona's the copper state. Exactly. And here we're looking at patinated copper on both walls and the roof condition. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking through at this cylindrical structure, again, dating from the 60s, and it was a student of Frank Lloyd Wright. Mm -hmm. And you know, What a deja vu that, here. Yeah, what a deja vu. I mean, <laughs> all good things come to, to one place, it seems like. But yeah. I'm really inspired walking on the campus. It's my first steps on the campus, mm -hmm. and these are the first two buildings I see. Yeah, and this is Hawaiian Studies, by the way, and then you were going, next picture is you were going deeper and down into it. Yeah. So again, this idea of public art, I learned about the history of public art being very seminal to mm -hmm. really thinking in mm -hmm. the architecture of Honolulu and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we're finding these little artifacts. I mean, it's again, this building was so well done and how it connects the Ray True Press, which is its mission to explain, mm -hmm. to a very contemporary thing. And they're, mm -hmm. they're timeless buildings. I mean, mm -hmm. again, I, I, you know, I've designed mid-century modern buildings. And it makes me feel old. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to believe that yeah. I built buildings that in their character and things are the, the markers. Every old building was new once. Mm -hmm. We have to remember mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. the good ones last, and the good mm -hmm. ones become part of our culture and our history and time. They're timeless. Yeah, timeless. Yeah. And so to have artifacts like this in communities mm -hmm. is an important thing. Mm -hmm. so. And so we moved on to the next one, got deeper into campus, which right. is officially not a part of UH, but right. an independent institution, which is East West Center and this and is IMP. Early young IMP full of all the vision that he had with all the, again, baggage he was carrying because he probably knew Frank Lloyd Wright, obviously, as well, but he also knew Corbusier, and mm -hmm. that's a famous French architect that changed the, the way we looked at the world in the mm -hmm. 20th century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are great indoor-outdoor buildings. This is a climate where you can amplify this whole synergy of inside and outside. The tectonics of it, whether it be these arch forms, and these precast concrete beams, the, in, the, the seamless flow between the landscape here and the buildings. Mm -hmm. And you can see the ac occupation. I mean, there, there, there's recreation, there's fun, there's uh, mm -hmm. contemplation, there's conversation, there's people with their iPhones, and there's people that are just reading a book and enjoying the, the, the place. But this is Absolutely. timeless. And these are support across from the theater there and sort of a, a meeting place next to a beautifully done Japanese garden. And then the housing was what really grabbed our attention. Next, That's next picture. And so there's the housing in the back, but you're also looking at landscape and the right. sort of interaction with landscape. And uh, this public art thing. Somebody was having fun, and it <laughs> might have been the night before, it might have been spring fever here. Yeah, yeah, An yeah. Easter egg hunt, I don't know. But this is what architecture and landscape do with each other to make place, mm -hmm. to make this whole idea of city and community happen together. Yeah. And it was, it was totally magical. I mean, we were wandering around on a Sunday morning. It was a week after, I think, two weeks after Easter. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, here's the synergy of just everything. Everything's coming together, and people are happy in this place. They're using it, they're enjoying it, and that's uh, exactly that's why we do buildings. You and, know, and, and these you wanted to see also from the inside, so we try to get into yeah. the dorms. Next right. picture. Yes. 
and this is uh, Halle Manoa, which we also ran a show about with one of the residents yeah. a couple of shows ago. So you guys, if you're more yeah, interested, so we look talked, at that. Yeah, and we talked our way in. I'm pretty good at that after all these years of knocking <laughs> on doors. You did a good so job. So suddenly we went to the desk and we couldn't get the proper ID and somebody was feeling sorry for me or saw our, my mm -hmm, passion and mm -hmm, my interest. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, we've got access to the elevator in the top of the and building. And that's next but, picture. So yeah. you were stunned by these spaces. Yes, well. because these are these open verandas at every third floor. Mm. So the way that building's set up, I think you'll all find interesting in that what you've got is you've got a layer of sort of common space, kitchens, meeting, hangout spaces, mm -hmm. and then the students go one level up or one level down from that open veranda to their own rooms. Yeah. And they're almost like monastic. I mean, they're almost like you're in a convent or a mm -hmm. monastery, mm -hmm. but they take advantage of the direction of the air and the breezes off uh, the mountains behind us and off to the sea. And then you get these horizon views up here in the bike bay, which is on one of the verandas where you mm -hmm. secure your bike and then take it down the elevator. And we're looking across the skyline, which I think people recognize pretty easily there. Mm -hmm. There's markers mm -hmm. on that skyline. And, and the city has a wonderful skyline. It's mm -hmm. really very, very special. So that's super yep. cool. And, and then there's and, another uh, communal function next picture in that zone. Yeah, people were, there's kitchens that open out onto the veranda. So you dine on the veranda. Uh, backup picture there, and there's a young woman there that's offering us some food for lunch. It was about lunchtime. We we passed on that, but these are individual student kitchens. They all have their their uh, bounty, and uh, they prepare it. And uh, mm -hmm. again, living in a great piece of architecture like they've had the privilege here, lets yeah. them go into the world sort of having good expectations and understanding mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what the difference makes. Yeah. But look at that skyline out there. That's pretty yeah. pretty interesting. And over there in the uh, let's see, let me get out of the picture there. So. Ironic, we have the circular building I met, mentioned a couple minutes ago, you being very fond of, mm -hmm. and then I'm sad to report that just like in Arizona, at Tempe or Tucson, we have this sad new manifestation of really awful dorms for profit. Mm -hmm. They come with no architecture, they come with no soul, no spirit, it's cheap buck stuff, yeah. with big rents for rich parents to put their kids up yeah, in the yeah, sky yeah, yeah. on their campuses around America. Yeah. I mean, the built environment of the university is a place that through time from Jefferson and mm -hmm. uh, University of Virginia, it all started with, mm -hmm. and the, the mm -hmm. lawn and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to, how we form yeah. our opinions as yeah, young yeah. people. No, and, and I, I couldn't agree more with you, and I have to tell the audience we have not been agreeing be on that beforehand, but we match because we ran yeah. a show about that project and the other one next to it, which is a nice single loaded yeah. corridor, easy yeah. breezy, and right, made yeah. that comparison. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So our plateau to <laughs> UH as yeah. a client yeah, yeah. is reconnect yeah. to your yeah. pretty high standard yeah. of the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and stuff you do these days, are, that's the benchmark, that's right? That's always the benchmark. We, we, we learn from the past to build the future. Exactly. That's very much what it's about. And right. I think anyway. related to that, the next picture is another good example for that. Right. right. And here we have, you know, if people see a building with louvers or light their area, they think about the environment. Well, a building isn't environmental if you see louvers on five, four sides. Mm -hmm. It says it's not. It's just a charade. Mm -hmm. But somehow it's a way to sort of put lipstick on a pig and decorate up this this barn, right? But it's it, it it's running a, a scam on us to make it pretend it's it's, it's yeah. sustainable. No, because we're looking from the veranda again of the dormitory by by. Uh, pay at this point, and one's real and one's not real. Yeah, and the real one's one has, new, these, yeah. has these two to three feet depth yeah. interstitial facade right. space that it, sheds out the elements, yeah, which the is rain, the sun yeah. and the rain. Exactly, and, and that the rain does is a big it. thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so amazing. It's, Good stuff. And so then we went, next picture, we went deeper. We looped around on campus, and yeah. on the way out, stopped by close to where you're going to speak tonight. And this is uh, one of the late Vladimir Asipovs here. This is Saunders Hall, sort of a tropical brutalist piece by yeah. him. Yeah. And I shared with you, that's my preferred teaching space yeah, here exactly. at the place. And we have buildings like that in the desert. They're mm -hmm. early buildings before air conditioning was even talked about mm -hmm. or sophisticated. Mm -hmm. These buildings thrive as gathering places for the students, for the faculty. Yeah. The flow from the skins into, the, into these courtyards. And it's all about, again, the courtyard buildings of Desert Pass for exactly. us in the desert. And uh, exactly. likewise there. But that was a, a thrill to, to no, see that sort of space exactly. there. And you having done many civic uh, typologies a whole bouquet of them, right. but you're certainly uh, sort of known for one typology more than others. Yeah. These are libraries. Libraries so and, and art museums. We basically came passion. home now yeah, here yeah. with the next project yeah. and showed you one of your yeah. siblings. Next right. picture, please. 
So this and this is, is Sinclair Library here. Right. That, um, and again, here we have Jealousy, we have Open, we have Air Flowing, we have a building really timeless but of its time. And for me, I look at things like the Louvre Jealousy is on the upper left. I'm finding on the uh, globe over there in the upper left-hand corner where we are exactly and mm -hmm. forgotten. Mm -hmm. But uh, right next to me, that weathered brick condition, you know, I mean, that was as fine as anything I saw in the art museum a few hours later. Mm -hmm. But I really like how materials have this ability for integrity. We're reading the mortar being stronger than the brick. Mm. We're looking at what 50 years does to something. Yeah. And yet, great cities are about those memories. Mm -hmm. They're not about repainting them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that was a thrill to see that, uh, that, yeah. that wall and its, its course through time, Absolutely. as well as the horizon. Next, please. And then in between, you never forget about what sort of the, the next picture, please. The center of all that is us in the tropics. Right. And we're in the right. foothills of the jungle here. Yeah. You yeah. go one more mile, you end up yeah. in, a, in a jungle with a waterfall. Yeah. And again, we have the vibrancy of life. We have the surprise of the bloom, oh my gosh. And we have the poetry of, of, of death and passing in the dead fronds again up in that mm -hmm. upper right hand corner. And I see all those offering clues to young architects and developers and builders and people wanting to think about how should I build a house in this place? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's right in the landscape. Yeah. There's all these clues for us yeah, to, yeah. to jump into. So as you can tell, we wanted to go on and on and on and tour the whole day, <laughs> but you wanted to see other things and yeah. you had a thing to, which you already said you wanted to go to the museum. So we had one more piece to show you as the big, maybe the final. Yeah. Well, the and the conclusion, tour. and that was that. Now, this, uh, this is uh, your, your state capital, and I was overwhelmed. I'd known of the building. It never th thrilled me. I, it was competent. It was interesting. It was well-proportioned, well-scaled. Mm. It was at the end of the architectural phase of our tour, at about three hours plus in, and I drove up to it, and my God, it's you have the best capital of any state in the Union. Mm -hmm. And you have a piece of architecture that's totally celebratory of our, your confidence and our time mm -hmm. that exceeds the U.S. Capitol by 10. Mm -hmm. Because we were living in a project of a time of isms, mm -hmm. which we still do, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you have a unbelievable government center in this building at the heart of it. It's invention. It's nature of sustainability, which was 50 years, 40 years again before it was part of the conversation. Mm. And what you were given by the architect Warnicke, John Carl Warnicke, uh, uh, timeless. And yeah. I will be going back to this building on Monday, when I've, next Monday when I'm here for a brief time because awesome. I want to get farther into it. Awesome. And we yeah. will get back to it here on the show because we have one of the still living uh, eyewitnesses who was part of the process and the, the project. And he's going to come on the show Fabulous. and basically talk yeah. talk about his experience. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're interested in the arts a lot. So you wanted to see the Honolulu right. Museum of Art, yep. which is the next picture where we left you alone and yeah, on exactly. your own. Exactly. We spent the next three hours, three and a half hours until they locked us out of the museum. Museum, and we were really surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, city of 700,000 people plus, I know that's the boundaries, but I've, I've learned that boundaries have new definition. Mm -hmm. Honolulu isn't a city, it's, mm -hmm. has, it's the biggest city in the world, in the world actually, because it goes 2,000 miles out on the islands, mm -hmm. it's all part of the county, mm -hmm. and that was fascinating. But mm -hmm. these museum buildings, again, architecture of museums is about the poetry of mm -hmm. presenting armatures to enjoy art and time. Mm -hmm. And whether it was Noguchi here or a contemporary sculptor, whether it was this whole idea about the world reflected, mm -hmm. I mean, you are to be totally applauded mm -hmm. and have this strong a resource. Mm -hmm. I could have been in New York yesterday and not been more ecstatic and excited and mm -hmm. enriched by what I learned. Mm -hmm. The Thank presentation you. of art through cultures, the building itself with its courtyards, with its shading, with its use of water to cool psychologically with, by sound and flow, yeah. all excellent. And then the mix of the art that we, we, we felt and mm -hmm. we saw, mm -hmm. beautiful curation, uh, a real point of pride for you to sort of have the one, two within a couple blocks of your great Capitol Building's architecture. Mm -hmm. And then this fine, fine museum. Yeah, yeah. And what a perfect, it was family uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so we saw the families participating. We had a wonderful lunch. Mm -hmm. And I'm not paid to offer this endorsement, but it's one of the best lunches I've had in any art museum. Mm -hmm. We traveled to a bunch of them mm -hmm. and then just learning. So mm -hmm. um, I considered my adventures with uh, Don and uh, 
Martin here to be a great thing. I gained so much, Shame and well. I should almost be paying for this trip no, to no. you for what you taught me. No, I it's mean, priceless in lot. many ways. And let's spend the last couple minutes uh, for Will having walked all that and having observed all that. I'm sure you, the way I know you, you have a couple of recommendations for us how we could keep paradise paradise, or in some parts even you know yeah. make it paradise again. Yeah. Okay, three observations. Okay, one is that. You have to get rid of the one-way street along the beach. Mm -hmm. You have to turn that into a pedestrian place along with a contemporary European-style streetcar, mm -hmm. not a light rail, mm -hmm. a low-speed uh, speed connector that would link from the Capitol yeah. and the Art Museum and one end of town to the other. The distance is just about right as far as miles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People would love it. The scale, the hotels would love it, yeah. the beach connection. Because I'm sure with those little streetcars, there's going to be a, a, yeah. a, a simple way to strap yeah. on surfboards on them. It's going to be great. It's going to add to yeah. their architecture. And just but the anyways, audience, not to confuse with a heavy rail mess yeah, yeah, we're doing yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we put one like this, like the, you're talking uh, back in Tucson. Yeah, and in, Tucson in has one right now. And Portland and I was still big, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in Portland, it's free in yeah, the center, yeah, too. Yeah, That's yeah, another yeah. thing. Changed. And the one in Tucson, yeah. that was on my year phasing out. It yeah. took them a year and not more. And it was not a big deal. Yeah, and again, that street without the noise and the pollution and mm -hmm. the energy of the car. Yeah. It is a beautiful people street. It's a shopping street. Mm -hmm. It's a enter entertainment and discovery street. It's a wedding street. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. everything. It's yeah. a city yeah. of a great street of a great city. That's number one. Number two, looking for my hotel, lots of tall vertical buildings. Respect for the difficulty of building in a mounted as place mm -hmm. efficiency. But it's strong, but it's ill-defined right now. Mm. And again, I would suggest that you should be thinking in the next couple of years to create the building that will set the new standard for thinking about a sustainable, continuous architecture. Mm -hmm. I would advocate a tower, maybe a thousand foot tall, 1200 foot, this mm -hmm. cities from San Francisco, not to just be like them, mm -hmm. but I would suggest that using an architect like Renzo Piano, mm -hmm. who has been a master now for almost 50 years of sustainability sure and construction, mm -hmm. creating icons like the Shard in London, like uh, the buildings everywhere that he touches, the, the new Whitney Museum in New York. But they're not, tower of, not superficially beautiful, but substantially they're beautiful. They're not right? about style and exactly. decoration. Mm -hmm. They're about the substance. And I advocate for that because the young architects that are being trained in your community, the young urban planners, they need a new role model other than mid-century buildings to look at for reflection. Mm -hmm. To have a high rise like that and then be given the charge as a young architect in your community to work on the small lots that once had three and four story buildings mm -hmm. and go for these pencil towers that are starting to become part of many environments. Mm -hmm. Skinny towers. What a great, skinny mm -hmm. towers, mm -hmm. Easy breezy, I think, is a word yeah. you use often. Mm -hmm. But it would be so great to see this city yeah. grow with that vitality because mm -hmm. that's not for lack of sort of economic force and willfulness that mm -hmm. the city is growing and changing mm -hmm. and has vibrancy. Mm -hmm. But I want to come the next time Absolutely. In five or ten years and see the future, not celebrate just the past. Absolutely. And we so. have one more minute left for number three. And number three becomes, I want and will be challenging at my lecture tonight with the students. I'm going to share my work this evening, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the walk we had because they are our future. I would like to believe that between the community, the professional architectural community, the development community, that a bunch of propositions could be given to the young architects in town to put them at the heart and soul of defining the Honolulu architecture of the 21st mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. And they become committed and engaged in that thing because they need to raise the bar with all of us. And as mentors and the fathers of, of architecture and the timelessness, I can't wait to see what they're, they'll be capable of and what they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And with that, see you all tonight. Next picture and last picture here uh, at 6 o'clock in the auditorium of our School of Architecture. It's going to be more of Will. And also, here's the link to his website, because I'm sure for people who saw the show, this was just an appetizer, and they're hungry to have more of you, timeless Will Bruder. So thank you very much for having been with us and Privilege. inspiring us. Thank you so much. Hopefully, we'll see a bunch of you tonight. And please come up and say hi. And uh, uh, the questions can go as long as you want to have the conversation tonight. So look forward to it. Thank you. All right. See you all tonight and next week. Bye-bye.